Hi everybody, Mature Simmer here. So welcome back to another episode of the Non-Aviator Flight Sim series that I'm putting out here on the channel to help those of you who, like me, may be coming to or may be looking to come to this hobby and just afraid and trying to figure out how to get around because you just know nothing about aviation. In this episode, I'm going to cover a couple aspects because, again, I'm not going to get into it in the detail that an aviator would. I'm going to give you enough to be dangerous and just to understand what you need to do. What happens to get a plane in the air? How does it work? How does a plane fly? What are the control surfaces? How do they operate? What do each of them do? Where we're at here right now, a local little airport nearby where I'm at. So it's, uh, you know, if I was to fly, I guess it might be my home airport if I was to fly in real life. So I've loaded in a plane here. Now this is a payware plane that I have. This is a A2A Piper PA24 Comanche. A2A is the company that puts it out. This has been rated as kind of one of the best general aviation aircraft out there. General aviation is simply a term that I would say is, it's things that aren't commercial. It's not, hey, I'm going to fly United or Delta or Southwest. Those are commercial. Those are not general aviation. All the other little tiny planes you see around the airport or the private planes, you know, so there might be Learjets or Gulf Streams, you know, the, the little corporate jets that, that go in and out and things like that. Those are all in the classification of general aviation. You know, a pilot might own something like this. And so really the way this aircraft got created is there is a pilot who this is their real aircraft. And basically, I, I don't know if it's this paint scheme or not. It comes with like six or seven different liveries or I may have downloaded some. I don't honestly remember. It doesn't matter. They love their plane. they have been flying it for like a decade. They love flight sim. They're like, you know what? I'm going to use my plane and I'm going to create a model. And they've created an excellent, excellent model. I've been using this for a little bit. We're going to talk about the plane moving through the air, but we're not going to do that while flying because that'd be frankly a horrible video because I'd be paying attention to flying and I wouldn't be able to talk to you about it. For understanding the basics, this will work best here because we can just talk about it. So when air is flowing around your plane or when gravity or the world is interacting with your plane, there's going to be four directional forces. You're going to have air coming from the front of the plane and that produces the lift as it goes under the wings and that raises the plane and that's how a plane, a bird, anything flies. General friction, they're going to create what's called drag. So that's going to pull you to the back and it's going to slow you down. So you have to obviously combat drag to create enough speed to create lift from the air that's then flowing underneath your wings, your airframe, and so forth. You're then going to have gravity obviously also pulling you down. And so as it's pulling you down, that's basically known as weight. You know, gravity is pulling you and it's pulling you down, wanting you to come back to Earth. And then the last force, as we said, going forward, combat the drag that is trying to basically, not really in pull you backward but slow you down is what we call thrust and so you're then using those four forces and so you have lift weight thrust and drag operating in the those four directions on a plane and so it's your job as a pilot to basically use those four forces and use the surfaces on your plane to go ahead and take advantage and use those four competing forces to get the plane to do what you want. We're going to kind of not get in the plane yet. We're going to talk about things here. You know, so you've got wings. I think everybody knows what the wings are. These are the pieces that stick out and that as the air flows, as we've got thrust moving us forward, air is flowing obviously over and under, but the way the wing is shaped creates a situation where it's easier to create lift because the basically the not getting too much into it you can see kind of the the wing is is curved on the top i mean there's a couple purposes for that obviously fuels in the wing so you need some space to store it the underside of the wing is is more flat so if we're down here you can see the wings are really pretty flat underneath where the top surface is curved. So air hitting the front of the wing when it gets split will have a longer 
travel time over the wing than it will under the wing. And so you're going to have more air, in essence, flowing under the wing than you do over the wing, which then allows it to combat the weight of the aircraft, the force that's pulling it down, and create lift. Okay, so within that, you are then, you know, having these surfaces here. Typically, the inner surface here is what's called a flap. And so the flaps are going to change the contour of the wing, not permanently, but we'll call it more permanently, because they're not surfaces that are controlled by your flight controls, other than you move the flaps in or out. But they change then the airflow over the wing using thrust and drag to basically impact your speed but also increase your lift a bit. So basically the flaps as you extend them, which means they come out from the wing, they will usually come out and down a little bit and that will then basically create a little more lift at a slower speed. So you don't have to go as fast to get the lift. Then these pieces here after the split on the end are the ailerons and these are what control what would be called roll or aileron roll if we're using kind of the the fully technical term along what's known as the longitudinal axis which is through the plane from tail to nose these surfaces then basically lift one wing up while the other wing is lowered to roll the plane to attempt to turn it is usually what you'll be doing there. Okay, so if we come back here to the tail, we've got some other surfaces. And again, you can see the tail's kind of flat on the bottom, but still relatively flat here. It's not rounded because the tail's not necessarily producing as much lift as the wings are. You're, you're doing most of your flying and creating most of your lift from the wings. So this surface here, the entire thing really is, is the elevator. And what the elevator will do is it will rotate up and down and I'll, I'll show these surfaces in motion later but this will tilt up and down and this will then all operate on what is known as the lateral axis which is kind of what goes left to right through the plane and the elevator then controls the pitch which basically is the nose up nose down that will cause the plane to try to go up or down to some degree, obviously in coordination with the wings and everything else you're doing. Then this piece here is the rudder, is the rudder, and this moves left to right, and this then controls the third axis, which basically goes straight vertically through the top and the bottom of the plane, and is therefore known as the vertical axis, but that cre is what uses yaw is the other movement that you're talking about. So that is sometimes the challenge if you're a non-aviator trying to learn about that because you're really moving along three axes in multiple directions and, and at times you're having to control multiple things. So if you have a heavy crosswind you may be you know using your you know, your, these surfaces, your elevators, your flaps, your ailerons to kind of rotate you a little bit, but then you're using your rudder to maybe make the plane rotate on its vertical axis a little bit uh, to counteract a heavy crosswind or something. And again, these are things that, that just like anything, you learn with some practice. The other pieces that are good to know about, obviously, uh, and we'll talk about this a little bit more when we go on a flight. Uh, you know, I'll probably use this plane because it's going to, it has more features than you have on other planes to really let you as a pilot, uh, how you'd start as a pilot in the real world, do some of the things that you would normally be doing. Like you can see there's, you know, there's wheel chocks, this plane is tied down, which would be pretty standard in an in, in airport. Small plane like this, heavy wind, you know, I can suddenly flip this thing over. One of the key items, and we'll come down here because it's got this piece hanging on it, and so you can see there's this little red tag here that says remove before flight and so that is what's known as a pitot tube and that basically helps drive some of the instruments inside uh, your plane. Those tubes to the best of my knowledge exist on all aircraft 
uh, even the big commercial airliners, they're just not necessarily in that place. And obviously the, they're used more often. They might not have that little cover on there. But, you know, for a general aviation aircraft like this, where the person that uses it is a single person, you know, they may be just be using it for fun or even if they are using it for business, you know, there are times it's parked and it's not going to be used where Southwest is running their planes pretty regularly. They're at a large airport. There's a lot of people around. You know, you don't want debris and things getting into the pitot tube because well, there's a little hole in there that as the air is, is coming in, it allows the plane to know certain things. And if that tube gets blocked, suddenly your instruments are not accurate or not helpful at all. So that's also why it's important that you don't get ice that freezes over it because again, it needs airflow. That's one of the more critical pieces. And then obviously, you know, you've got the propeller, you know, the tails, the vertical stabilizer, but you know, non-aviation folks like us will call it the tail. And all of those things are involved in the engineering of an aircraft so that it can fly well and uh, do its job. So at this point, we're going to switch the view a little bit, but we're going to come in here. So we're going to look at the control surfaces. So you'll see the first thing we talked about, the flaps are in inside. So I've gone ahead and I've applied some flaps here. If I go down further, that's the lowest level. And then we can back it off, back it off a little more, and then we're back to level. So basically you have three levels of flaps here. And the further you extend them like that, the more drag they're going to create from as you're moving forward and using your thrust, it's going to counteract that thrust, create more drag, but it also creates a bit more lift because now that wind that's going underneath is, is hitting that surface a little harder and try, you know, still trying to move backwards as it was, you know, kind of the old physics thing you know, that, that an object in motion tends to stay in motion, like the air just wants to keep going, but now suddenly this flap is in its way, and so some of that energy is then used to lift the flap and therefore lift the plane, and so you can go at a slower speed and still maintain some control. It might be hard to see inside with the pilot, but as I turn, you can see the yoke moving a little bit, kind of one side coming up, but I'm pushing to the left. So you can see here, like I want to turn to the left, which in essence is what I'm doing. So along my longitudinal axis, the front and back, my roll point, I want to create roll this way. And so what I'm doing in this case is I'm lifting the left aileron, which again is creating a surface for the air to push against, which is now going to push down as it goes over the top because it's creating, you know, kind of against the lift. So it's going to lower that wing you know, and if I go and I'm still going to the left, you'll see the right aileron goes the opposite way. And so it's doing, in essence, a little bit of the same thing that the flap was doing, but because the ailerons are not together where the flaps, when they're down, they're both down. Now this wing is going to get lift, the other one's going to get less lift, and it's going to roll along that, out that axis. So the other thing you'll do, you know, they'll say pull back on the stick, you know, you'll, you might hear in disaster movies where a plane is, you know, they'll, they'll be pull up, pull up, you know, when they, so if you pull back on a plane, this is what it's doing to the elevator. It's, it's putting it at that angle. So this is fully pulled back. And once again, just envision air coming through here and what it would be doing. It's going to be basically pushing on that to surface now and causing it to rotate around the pitch which is the axis that goes left to right through the wings, and then it would lower the tail and raise the nose. Consequently, if I push forward, the elevator goes the opposite way, and this will do exactly the opposite. Now the tail will want to rise, and that will then, across that axis, cause the plane to rotate where the nose will go and pitch lower. And then finally, your rudder, you can see, moves back and forth, and this just creates through the vertical axis, basically straight through the plane. This is the yaw motion that you would have with a plane. You're using the rudder a lot when you're taxiing. That's kind of how you're in essence turning because sometimes, I mean, the wheels turn a little bit, but that helps with the airflow because again, you're then rotating 
the plane in general and you're creating additional airflow forces that cause it to rotate and obviously when the wheels aren't on the ground this would be even more pronounced so typically you're steering with your ailerons and your elevators but then let's say you know you're making a left turn what you're normally going to do you're pulling down and to the left so what you're trying to do because as you turn again you, you're only creating so much thrust and so that thrust is now getting used on the ailerons so I'm doing it a little bit more aggressively there but so now that you can see the ailerons are deployed in that left turn but the elevators also dealing with the pitch to move the nose up because to do a level turn that's what you need to do if I just push left the plane is going to lose altitude because some of what was used for the lift is now being used to turn and therefore there isn't as much lift so you're in essence creating a little bit of lift by pitching the plane at the same time and consequently as I said you know let's say we're, we're here behind the plane and we've got let's say a crosswind coming at us from the left side and it's pushing the plane over a bit so you'll be flying to the left and so you're not necessarily going to be doing anything with your ailerons but you know you're going to you're going to be pushing down a little bit to get a little bit of down but then what you also will likely be doing is using your rudder to rotate yourself back onto a more center line facing uh, type of landing just before you land so that the plane isn't landing at 10 degrees and then really doing damage to the tires or uh, so forth but that again becomes more challenging to do stepping into the cockpit here just real quickly to kind of tie things together so again th you know this this is your yoke this is kind of your control in out you know so it's pull up you know go down go left right you know kind of like a steering wheel there but you know the difference is in a plane this if I'm flying straight and level then I've done this my, my controls are there and I want to make a left turn I'm turning left but you can see I'm pulling back a little bit too and you're you know you're having to watch your instruments to see what magnitude you have to apply to the controls to do things properly and then the last thing we're gonna look at here and it's a little challenging to see so I'm trying to get a good view this separate piece here is what's called a trim tab so it's it's different sizes on different planes I, I've you know I've seen planes that have just very little ones you know it would almost be like this piece of metal and that's all it is and so this is a little bit like flap but it's on the elevator surface and so what this is used for because as you can see it kinda you know is just this section so in this case I've got the trim tab in fully in what's called the up position and again this is where it gets a little challenging to be able to to figure out what's really going on but what you use the trim tab for is once you're flying straight and level or once you're flying you know you you want to be level to avoid having to keep some sort of pressure on the yoke forward or back that you'd be then doing with the elevator this in essence creates angle of attack of the elevator that helps keep the plane in a better position and because it's just a smaller surface rather than this entire elevator that we're using to move up and down it has a, a smaller impact and so in this plane uh, you know you're, you're using this to rotate and so we were fully in that direction but basically the neutral is where we were in the middle because you know this way you're you're pushing it more down so there's less that you can do with the trim tab to move the pitch of the plane down now if I'm here you can see it's it's slightly moved but not much versus it was much more pronounced the other way but hopefully that gives you a better feel for exactly what you're doing with a plane um, and just like anything I'd encourage you in flight simulator if you're if you've not flown don't just jump in an airliner and, and go the emphasis in in this is more it's a simulator than it is some sort of video game that you're just able to do whatever in so you know this isn't the Star Wars things where you just 
hop in the X-Wing fighter and there's no gravity in this and that and you're just wherever you point your joystick the thing goes things will be counteracting what you're trying to do and if you're not going fast enough you're not creating enough thrust you're not moving forward enough you know you, you get into stall conditions this that and whatever so you should start in a smaller plane like this. Now I'm likely going to be dropping a bunch of videos all at once here because the goal is to at least let you get somewhere with the set of things you have. Basics of flight and then more importantly the surfaces on the plane that affect those, those uh, forces so that you know what the flight control systems are and kind of where they are, what they do. And what their purpose is because again uh, coming into this without knowing anything about flying uh, can be pretty intimidating but as you start to get more familiar with it just like anything you, the, the comfort level should go up any questions at all be, ha be happy to do my best to answer them um, you know if nothing else I might point you to you know a pro who's answered it better than I can, but I know part of the reason people may be asking is once again they're not looking to get inundated by a professional trying to get them to be perfect and do it the right way. They just want to be able to enjoy this and not be afraid of it. So hopefully this will help you do that. If you've enjoyed this and I haven't dropped a like, please consider that. And if you are not a subscriber yet to the channel, please consider that. And I will see you next time.